Hello everyone, Oyster Mushroom Expert here. Today I will talk about mold in an oyster mushroom block. Why does mold begin to grow in the substrate along with oyster mushroom mycelium? There are several most common reasons. First reason. The raw materials are too dirty and wet. Perhaps you bought dry raw materials, there was a lot of dust in it, but this did not affect the development of the mycelium. Then, during storage, the raw materials gained a lot of moisture, and microorganisms began to develop rapidly. That is, the raw material itself already contains so many mold spores and bacteria that even if the substrate is properly treated, these microorganisms will grow. If the raw material contains a lot of dust, pieces of earth, but it is dry, it still contains a lot of spores. These spores are coated, but as soon as you soak such raw materials, the spores begin to germinate. If you process the substrate without heating, using lime or other chemicals to disinfect the raw material, mold will grow in the substrate if there are too many spores. Because the chemical reagents lose their activity while the mycelium germinates. And they cannot suppress the development of mold spores, which began to germinate on the fifth or sixth day after inoculation of the substrate with mycelium. If you soak the raw material and then heat it, the hot water will only kill the spores that have emerged from the shell and begun to grow. If there were initially a lot of mold spores, then there will also be a large number of spores that did not have time to start growing and remained in the shell. These spores begin to germinate only during the incubation stage. What happens in this case? We introduce a very large amount of oyster mushroom mycelium by mixing the substrate with grain spawn. Therefore, the oyster mushroom mycelium begins to grow immediately. Mold spores do not grow for the first few days. Because the substrate has an alkaline pH. After 3 to 4 days, the pH slowly decreases. Because mycelium releases organic acids as it grows. As soon as the pH becomes slightly alkaline or close to neutral, mold spores awaken. First they swell, then break through the shell. Their hyphae grow in the same way as oyster mushroom mycelium. How to distinguish mold mycelium? For the first few days, the mold mycelium cannot be distinguished from the oyster mushroom mycelium, since they are both white. Or rather, I will say this, there are very few people who can differentiate hyphae by appearance. In fact, the hyphae of the green trichoderma mold, which most often affects the substrate, are of an unsaturated whitish color, even with a light gray tint. And the hyphae of oyster mushroom mycelium are pure white, although their color is also not very dense. However, distinguishing these colors from one another is a very difficult task. When the mold mycelium forms spores, we see a green, olive, or black patch. That is how the spores of any mold most often have an intense color of various colors. Mold sporulation occurs on the 10th 13th day of the incubation period of mycelium overgrowth. Quite rarely, you can find orange neurospore mold on the oyster mushroom substrate. It can be seen already on the third or fourth day from inoculation, as it produces spores very quickly. Neurospora is also known by another name, red or pink bread mold. This mold is the first to appear in the ground in fields after a fire. Therefore, if your raw materials were collected where there was a fire the previous year, there is a very high probability that the dust and small lumps of earth contain pink bread mold spores. There is another mold whose spores are pink. But she looks different. Its color is closer to light lilac, and I have only seen it in the form of small round spots. If you have photos of a spot with spores of a different shape, please email them to me. This mold is called fusarium, and the disease it causes is called fusarium.
I have seen such spots on substrates made of straw and cotton husks, but very rarely. Its toxins are quite dangerous. You can ask a question in a search engine about this. Black mold. I see a lot of Google searches about black mold in mycelium and substrate. If you have this problem, please send me a photo to my email. The address is now on the screen, and it is in the description under this video. The fact is that I have encountered black mold from the Mucor family only once. This is what she looked like. I'm not 100% sure what it's called since I'm not a mycologist. A mycologist friend of mine said that the scientific name of this mold is spinelis fusiger. Maybe. I also saw this gray mold. And I don't know its name either. I probably won't be able to tell the difference between mucor mold and dark gray aspergillus. Although I know for sure that they can be easily distinguished under a microscope by the structure of the sporangia. For mushroom growers who grow oyster mushrooms, it is important to understand that the fight against any mold, regardless of its name, consists of disinfecting the premises and properly disinfecting the raw materials. The second reason, when you first start making substrate, your equipment and facilities do not contain very many mold spores. But over time, these spores accumulate. Especially if you do not thoroughly clean the surfaces of substrate residues and do not treat the equipment and inoculation room with chemicals that kill mold spores. On my website there is an article about drugs that are used in mushroom growing. These are disinfectants that can be used indoors and the instructions for which say that they kill the spores, and not the mold itself. Basically, drugs are now used whose active substance contains either quaternary ammonium compounds or polyhexamethylene guanidine hydrochloride. You need to find drugs that are approved for use in your country and contain one of these substances. You can also use a 5% hydrogen peroxide solution to treat the inoculation room. It must be prepared from concentrate, diluted according to the instructions. Both the solution and the concentrate should be kept in a dark place, without access to light. The preparations can be sprayed with a handheld garden sprayer several hours before inoculation. It is necessary to use a gas mask and special protective clothing that is designed for working with sprayed drugs. The third reason is improper processing of the substrate. This is a big topic and I plan to make a separate video on this subject. The fourth reason is improper cooling of the blocks during mycelium overgrowth. I already briefly mentioned this phenomenon in the video in which I talked about overheating of blocks. The link to this video will be in the description and first comment. The bottom line is that when blocks that are in the incubation period are suddenly cooled, water is released between the substrate and the film. By the way, here I also want to emphasize that many mushroom growers heard somewhere, or someone told them, that the temperature in the center of the block should not rise above 29 or 30 degrees Celsius. Therefore, they introduce too much cold air into the incubation room in an attempt to cool the blocks as quickly as possible. Due to the large amount of cold air, the surface layer of the substrate cools sharply and water from the center of the block moves under the film. Mold spores multiply very quickly in the subfilm layer of the substrate due to the fact that it is soaked. In this case, you see a substrate well overgrown with mycelium. Green mold exists only in a very thin layer between the film and the substrate. But, unfortunately, in almost 100% of cases such a mushroom block does not bear fruit. What to do about this phenomenon? Incubation conditions must be observed. I will also make a separate video about this. And that's all for today, bye everyone.